When does life begin? Life is a continuum. From the time the egg is fertilized through the various stages of development in the womb, from the time we're born, through childhood, through adolescence to old age, life is a continuum. The question is, at what point during that continuum do we become human? It's a question that scientists have dealt with for many years, and it's certainly a question that our society has grappled with for many years. Can we reach an adequate answer through scientific analysis and endeavor? Well, let's examine the stages and see if science can really help us answer this question. First of all, many would argue that at the time of fertilization, we are human. After all, at that point, we have all the genetic material that we're ever going to have. Where our, uh, our genetic blueprint, if you will, is determined at that point. Others would argue that no, it's only 12 to 14 days after conception that we're really fully human. They use the argument that up to this point, the uh, embryo can split into two distinct persons, the so-called identical twins. They would argue that if this uh, embryo is destined to split later, how could it be fully human at that point? After all, it's gonna be two people later. However, I would argue that this uh, analysis fails simply because of the concept of identical twins. Sometimes we have a split that does not complete and we have twins that are born that share certain organs. But these twins have distinct personalities, they're distinct people. So this uh, twinning argument, if you will, does seem to fail. There are others who argue scientifically that it's not until, say, 24 to 26 weeks when certain neurologic structures are formed in the fetus and, the, and certain nerve impulses are started to be generated and transmitted that we become fully human. Others argue that the uh, fetus is not fully human until it can exist totally on its own after birth when the umbilical cord is cut until the child can breathe with its own lungs and, uh, and the digestive tract is fully functional. But again, analysis of this really shows that this argument fails because is a newborn child really independent of its mother? Certainly it's not using the umbilical blood flow, but that child's not going to survive without care from a caregiver. There's even a further uh, extrapolation of this idea. There's a Nobel laureate, a very famous scientist who argues that the child is not fully human until the third day after birth. What makes any of these opinions more valid than the other? After all, prominent scientists accept all of these different uh, points of humanness, if you will. So does science really give us the answer? Where do we get the answer? Ultimately, we must turn to God's word for the answer. In Psalm 139, we read that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. In Jeremiah, we, we hear that I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. In Psalm, in sin, my mother conceived me. So we must ask the question, how can one have a sin nature if you're not fully human at the time of conception? When scripture speaks of the unborn, it always speaks of a person. So can science give us the answer? No, science has given us wonderful information about the development of the fetus, the biochemistry, the physiology, the anatomy. Unfortunately, the question, when do we become human, cannot be answered by the scientists. It's only from God's word that we truly understand that we're fully human from the time of fertilization.